Hello, and welcome to Folio Weekly Magazine. I'm Rob Nicholson. My guest today is a Grammy winner, Academy Award winner, songwriter, environmentalist, activist, musician. Melissa Etheridge, welcome to Folio Weekly Magazine. Oh, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Now, Melissa, you're out on tour. We can't wait to get you here. Um, we'll see you on May 9th at the Thrasher uh, Horn Center. Um, talk to me about how the tour is going and what we might expect. I can't wait to see the show. Uh, well, we started. Uh, we just started this week. Um, I'm out here in California still, and I'm headed east, taking the southern route that form trip. And um, it has been uh, fantastic. I have a an incredible band that I love playing with, and, and we have played together for a few years now, and so we're just really tight, and it's really fun to play. And and I like to tell people, especially those that are thinking of coming and they don't know for sure, that you will hear the hit songs. I love playing the songs that you know and love, and I'm so grateful I've got you know five or six of them to share with you all. Then you'll hear songs from... You know, those albums that you have, and then um, a couple of new things that have to do with uh, what I'm doing, but, you know, just one or two. And it's just going to be a, a a rocking time, a time to just enjoy music and enjoy, you know, just that, the, the, the experience of people coming together to hear something. Well, it sounds like just what we're looking for. In fact, I spent some time today watching a journey, uh, the, uh, a little bit of me in L.A. from 2014, uh-huh. and that camaraderie with your band is so uh, electric. And you're also t- touring on your last record or your latest record, One Way Out. Um, this is your 16th studio uh, recording, and it's a record. It's songs that you had written. Uh, that it wasn't the beginning of your career because you've been doing this uh, for a while, but yeah. um, but it, you know the late eighties and nineties. Tell me about the record. Oh, the record um, was done during the pandemic, so uh, it was kind of a, a thought of wow, let's. Um, I've got these. Uh, some of them were older recordings uh, from about seven eight years ago, and um, a, a couple of live tracks, and it was um, this kind of just wanting to rock and roll. And the fun part is, even though these are older songs that didn't make the album, uh, they're still really good, and I'm so happy that they're they're out there. And, and we play at, at least one every night, and it's just, uh, it, they feel like they were on the early 90s, late 80s uh, records that, I, that, that they didn't make it on. But they did now, and, and, and uh, wait till you hear that record if you haven't heard it already. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about Florida. Um, we've got mm-hmm. some kind of wacky legislation uh, going through mm-hmm. our legislature, and um, you have been an, an activist and a supporter of LGBTQ rights for uh, quite a long time. Have you got any advice for us here in Florida with what's going on? You know what? It's it's really something. I I have been out for uh, 30 years now. And I've been very actively involved in LGBTQ politics and, and issues and, you know, rights and, and you know, just moving. And, and we've come so far. We really have. I mean, I have two children and I'm married and living a, you know, incredible life. And I see many, many, in many uh, cities around, I see, you know, success happening and, and thriving happening. And then every now and then... In more, um, well, using more southern states, uh, Florida, you see these people taking a very conservative, you know, wanting to go back in time, wanting to uh, kind of get back to something. But, it, but they, the, the politicians will just uh, push these buttons, will feed this these little flames of fear of the other, and. Um, you know, gays and and lesbians and especially trans people can really uh, people misunderstand. They don't understand it, and when you don't understand something, it's fearful. And so the, these politicians can ignite those fears and say, "Yes, this is bad, and we need to, uh, you know, stop you know, drag queens and things." Which are, if you knew a drag queen, they're just the funniest. Easy. They're, it's just so, you know, it's just really silly that these politicians would 
for power and, uh, you know, money and, and power for those things would turn people's uh, un un just because they don't understand these these these, these fears um, into political gain for them. And I've seen it done over and over. And you know, the the community will keep rising up, and we we're, it's just making us stronger, supporting each other, and being more. Out and the thing that I've always said for 30 years is, is to my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community, uh, you know, being out and being yourself and and just representing makes the biggest difference because then there's somebody who says, oh, well, I know a gay person and they're not so bad. They live down the street. They, I work with them. I, you know, whatever it is, that 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 is the answer there. I couldn't agree with you more. That's great advice. Thank you. Now, you won the Academy Award for the song, I Need to Wake Up, and that was a song for the documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. Can you talk about where you feel like we are in preserving our environment, environment or our planet, in both foreign and domestically? I think there is a an understanding with people now that uh, human life is connected to the planet that we are living on, <laughs> that we are uh, inhabiting, and what's good for the earth is good for us. And um, I realized that with uh, with my health uh, issue I had, gosh, over, you know, almost 17, 18 years ago, that um, taking care of the earth is, is taking care of myself, is taking care of my body. So um, I think it gets better and better. I think there's a lot of scary things that um, feel overwhelming. And when we look at something and go, I can't keep a glacier from, you know, melting. You're just scaring me. I think if, if you keep it local, if you keep it in your house, if you keep it in your community, then then one can really make the, the choices that change uh, global warming, change, the, you know, the climate, uh, the way we are living our lives. Again, great advice and, and very attainable in that way. Split your gears on you one more time and going back kind of to show business. I was pleased to learn recently. I didn't realize you were in Green Day's Broadway show, um, Idiot, as St. As Jimmy. Um, but you also did, uh, last, I believe it was last October, um, My Window, A Journey Through Life, and it was sold out. You couldn't get a ticket to it. Is there any chance that's going to revive? Yes. Yes, yes. We I hopefully I will announce it next uh month. <laughs> I'm going to go to Broadway and I'm gonna go from September through December. And we are I'm very excited because it's it's it was such a this is a one woman show and it's uh it's my life story in and it's funny and it's rocking and it's touching and it's you're gonna learn a lot of things about me you didn't know even though you think you know a lot about me. And um, it's, it, it was such a delight that I, I can't wait to bring it to Broadway to, to have a, 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 even a deeper and better experience on this. So, yes, yes, sir, going to be there. That's great news. If you're just tuning in, I'm talking with Melissa Etheridge. She'll be here on May the, uh, May the 9th at the Thrasher Horn Center. You can get tickets now through Thrasher Horn. There are some left, not many, so get them now. Melissa, thank you so much for taking some time to speak with Folio Weekly. It is my pleasure, and I look forward to, to playing there. And for Folio Weekly Magazine, I'm Rob Nicholson.